Lutheran Senior Center. Um, my name is Michelle. I'm the program specialist uh, here at the center, and it is my honor to introduce Dr. Shang. Um, she Hi. is um, a practicing acupuncturist mm -hmm. and has a clinic in Coralville. And if you have any questions about that, she can talk about that later. Mm -hmm. But um, she's also a volunteer here at the Senior Center. She's doing this three-part series. This is the first mm -hmm. of three parts. Um, we'll also have um, a lecture in October and one in November that you're welcome to come to as well. And then uh, once a month on Saturdays, she does free ear acupuncture. So it's by appointment, mm -hmm. and it's down in the lobby. Yes, yes. So um, she really knows her stuff, and I think you're going to learn a lot from her program today. And um, thank you for coming, and we'll thank go you. ahead and get started. All right. Okay. Welcome, everybody. It's my pleasure to be here today to be sharing the wealth of knowledge of Chinese medicine. And I know we're all here for a common thing, which is for our health. And that is what Chinese medicine is all about. A um, little bit about myself. My name is Kai Yung. Uh, I'm a fourth generation Chinese medicine practitioner. I was born in Taiwan. I received my training and education at Bestier University in Seattle. Um, my background training includes both naturopathic medicine and also Chinese medicine. And I furthered my study in Shanghai and Taiwan, uh, where they have traditional Chinese medicine hospitals and clinics. Um, all right. And so welcome all of you. And I know some of you um, might have some background in, or knowledge in Chinese culture. Um, such as Tai Chi. I know Tai Chi is a popular class here at the Senior Center. Um, some people might know about Qigong um, or martial arts. Or maybe this is your first time hearing about Chinese medicine. But what I'm going to tell you, what you will learn today, actually not all Chinese people know about it. <laughs> so you'll get the first-hand information. And at the end of this lecture, not only you'll learn about what is the essence that encompasses Chinese medicine, you will also learn about the basic origin of all Chinese culture, um, which is the yin and the yang. And you will also learn on the healthy living tips uh, in, uh, in accordance to the four seasons. And so, um, and overall, we're here to, to uh, gain our health, um, mentally, physically, and spiritually. And so let's get started. And then what Michelle just talked about, so today is the first lecture series where we will cover the basic principles. The second lecture is on October 24th, also a Wednesday at 3 o'clock, um, where we will cover the modalities of Chinese medicine, from acupuncture needles to cupping, uh, gua sha therapy, to herbal treatments, so we'll cover more of that and also do some d live demonstration here. And the third lecture, which is on November 14th, I'll be sharing some TCM secrets, um, which is nutrition, as well as, um, I've written it down here, uh, secrets of TCM bio clock for health. So there's actually a whole sort of um, scheme of according to different times of the day, what you should do in order to maintain um, good health and, and promote longevity. So we'll cover that in the third lecture. All right. And let's see, we'll get started. So what is Chinese medicine? Like in America, a lot of people know Chinese medicine by acupuncture. You know, and people have delved so much uh, research um, time into understanding why is it so powerful? How does it work? Is it trial and error? Is it placebo? And this picture I'm about to show you um, can illustrate what basically what the people are thinking. <laughs> so people really don't know, and they think, oh, maybe it's trial and error. So. We got this mammoth, <laughs> all of a sudden, his neck feels better. <laughs> um, but in actuality, Chinese, in order to ac understand acupuncture, you have to understand the origin, 
the whole package, the whole package of Chinese medicine that comes with it. And, and this picture will tell you what it is. Acupuncture is only a tip of iceberg. There's so much wealth of wisdom and knowledge behind it. If you don't understand that, it's, you're just kind of at the tip. <laughs> so today we will actually delve into, you know, the below part. And um, in actuality, in, with martial arts, with Qigong, with Tai Chi, it all comes from the same origin. There's a proverb, um, Chinese proverb, do you, does anyone know I Ching? It's a type of um, sort of ideology from China. And there's a proverb that says Chinese medicine and I Ching are from the same origin. So, so we will really delve into that in a bit. Okay. So Chinese medicine was developed thousands of years ago. Um, its first medical text showed up around 2,500 years ago. Um, and the, the textbook is called The Yellow Emperor's Internal Classics. And this is a picture of the Yellow Emperor. And in this book, it emphasized on promoting longevity and good health. So it really talked about identifying what this disease is and how to treat it. It was more like how to promote good health. You know, what do I need to do mentally, spiritually, and physically to promote that? And there is one essence that this book touches on. In another Chinese proverb, it's called the harmony of the sky and human. And what does that mean? And I found a great picture. Maybe this will illustrate. So imagine the harmony of sky and human becomes one, that oneness. So this proverb basically illustrates that uh, people are connected to the universe and that harmony is achieved by accepting the natural life forces and the natural way of life. And it is also about eating healthy, um, doing the you know, right exercise at the right time, and also maintaining an emotional equilibrium. And actually, Chinese medicine is a life science. Um, it emphasizes that uh, observation is a key thing in Chinese medicine. But not only you observe the outer world, you also observe the inner world. And, and by saying that the harmony of sky and human, that means if you look into your macro, uh, micro universe, then you can understand the, the macro, the bigger universe. Another Chinese proverb, it says, from medicine, you understand the way of living, and from it, you understand the world. And this goes, you know, the observation that we just talked about, it goes even far as your daily activity. So whether you're sitting here, whether you're standing, every movement is all about medicine. And that key thing is called yin yang, which we will get to right now. Okay, I'm sure all of you have seen yin yang symbol everywhere. You know, anything that has to do with martial arts, you'll see yin yang. Can you tell me which one is correct? <laughs> and, and this is the part that not all Chinese people know. The first, this one looks, this one looks, looks right. <laughs> All right, I won't, I won't keep, keep you guys pondering. I'll tell you, it, it is this one. And it's actually, if you have to kind of understand in a way. So the yang, there's a, we, we think of it as um, fire as a representative of yang and water is representative of yin. So if you think of the nature, the, by observation again, if you think of fire, the flame rises up. So that's why we have this going up and the water is heavy, gravity sinking down. And then 
We'll talk about more why that is on the left side versus the right side. But that is just to tell you that that is the correct symbol of yin yang. And then, in the, oh, yes, there's more hand out there. Yeah, right there. And in order to understand yin yang, you also have to understand five elements. So yin yang by itself is just, it is as it is, but it is the five element that makes it um, more exciting. <laughs> I just put it that way. And unfortunately, a lot of people understand five element as, oh, okay, it is water and water. When you keep watering it, it creates a wood. So the plant grows out from wood. Okay, if you take the wood and go burn it and it creates fire and fire, when it becomes ashes, it becomes earth and earth. Inside the earth, there's a lot of mineral, so that creates metal. So actually, no, five element doesn't really equal to material objects. Um, the material object symbolizes what it is, but it doesn't equal to it. Five element in Chinese is called wu xing. And wu xing, if you literally have to translate it, it means five movement or five stages or quality. And yin yang, let's see. So right here. So yin yang and wu xing, they're not an isolated concept. Without yin yang, wu xing doesn't exist. And without wu xing, yin yang doesn't just sit there and doesn't have a meaning to it. So now we're going to combine the two. So, but we have to come back to the theory of the harmony of sky and human and just kind of look at this again. How, how do we combine the, the changing life forces, the different stages of Wu Xing, and how does that relate to the yin and the yang? So in actuality, five element is showing the, the stages of yin yang. And yin yang gives quality to the five element. So here, here is the picture again. And now we'll kind of combine it where the sky and the human becomes one. And then now this is kind of the tricky part where you guys have a table handout here. And I'll draw draw the yin yang picture and then we will go macro into micro okay so we have like a center here and then okay and then we know this this is the dark part with the white all right Okay, so starting with five directions. So we have east, and east actually relates to our left side. So I'll just put a big L here. <coughs> east, and then south is here, and then center, we have west, here on this side and north. Okay, so why is yin yang showing stages of a five element? Remember we said this was all water and water is heavy and then this part is um, fire and fire goes up. Well think of the south, south is really hot. So that's why south is here. And all the water going down here, north, North is cold. So that's how Chinese in the ancient time understood the, the directions. OK, and now we go to five season, honing in. So east is spring. And like this one, definitely summer. <laughs> OK, and the west is autumn. And north is winter. So this is all making sense. 
you understand that we're kind of skipping the middle column. That's that's for the center. And okay, and then now we go to the five element. Here is wood. When wood is burnt, generates fire. And fire down here, it kind of goes. There's actually a, a, a spot right here, but it's more. You know, when you have to draw in the picture, it actually locates in here. And fire creates earth, and so this is the center, earth. And then autumn, where we have metal. In winter, we have water. So again, this is symbolizing the yin yang. The yang part is fire, the yin part is water. Okay, and then now, time to address the human body. And the five organs, one interesting thing that I hope everybody understand is that whenever Chinese people, or Chinese medicine, when they talk about the five organs or any organ system, they're not really talking about the actual organ. So for example, liver, when, when we sometimes say, oh, your liver blood deficient. It's not like you're, something really is wrong with your liver. Um, when they talk about liver, it's more like an energy that symbolizes how it flows. And um, so it's not the re real liver. But sometimes it does overlap. So we have liver here. And we have the heart here. We have lungs. And then kidneys. Okay, and these organs further open up, have a corresponding sort of opening in our, in our um, body system. This one opens to the eye, this opens to the tongue, this opens to the nose, and this opens to the ears. Okay, and then further holding in onto a, pers a person's aspect that you can't see, which is the five emotions. So the liver associates, or the yeast associates with anger, joy, sadness, and this one is fear. And actually in the middle is worry. So, so this is kind of like an overflow. And, and you would think, well, how, how does this relate to Chinese medicine? I'll give you one example. Um, my my uh, really dear teacher, she's at Bastyr University. Uh, her name is Hong Yu. And um, one time when I was still a student intern, this lady came in and had a conjunctivitis, like a redness in her eye, only on one side, her left side. And, you know, we, as a student, we were all like asking her all these little information details. We're trying to gather all the information we can. Did you change your, you know, facial wash? Did you change your contact? Was there a bacterial infection? We just went on and on and on. However, when my teacher, Hong, when she, when she came in, she sat down, took the patient's pulse. The first question she asked the patient was, did you recently have an argument with somebody? Did you have a fight with somebody? And the patient looked like, well, yeah, I, I fought with my boyfriend this past weekend. And that was when all the I things started. And then my teacher was like, mm-hmm, OK, I know what to do. And then we, and she left the room, and we were like, what? What is she talking about? You know, couldn't it be some bacterial infection or whatnot? But when we came out and asked the teacher, she explained this chart to us. And because it was on her left side, and she had a fight with somebody, <laughs> and the liver, when it's constricted and it wants to burst out, then the energy went th through her eyes and she had the conjunctivitis. So it is this type of thinking, um, logic, 
uh, but that makes Chinese medicine a little bit more profound. Like, how would this something perhaps bacterial uh, occur? Um, but it, it's definitely, and then we treat later treated her, you know, kind of soothing her energy, and really her her eye got better. So that's just one example of showing you how Chinese medicine practitioner um, sort of thinking process. Okay, so. With all this in mind, this we will go into the four season living tips. And and then we'll kind of refer back to this. All right. So for spring and for each season, I will cover a little um, short translation from the Yellow Emperor's internal classics and then I will also tell you a little bit of what food that they suggest okay so the first one spring and and a lot of things in Chinese medicine is um pictorial you kind of have to use your imagination so for spring you have new growth so in the in the Huangdi Neijing which is the yellow emperor classic, it says, the three months of spring brings revitalization. It is time of birth, and it's best to go to bed early and then wake early, and let your hair loose, and wear loose-fitting clothes. Take a leisure walk in the garden and stretch out your tendons. Be open both physically and emotionally. And if you violate the nature or the natural order of spring, it will damage the liver. You see how the spring is related to liver. And if liver is damaged, then it will create disease for summer because the foundation of nourishment was not plentiful in the spring. So if you imagine this little sprout is growing but we let it wear tight clothes and we tie the hair up. <laughs> it's not gonna be happy. And when it's not happy, what will happen? Anger. <laughs> and, and if this, the sprouting aspect isn't strong enough, how are we gonna get fruit in the summer? So if you imagine kind of the little plant, you know, follow the natural sort of guidance, what the, nat the, the nature is teaching us. Um, there's a lot of information in there. And it says to take a leisure walk and stretch out the tendon. Liver, I didn't include in here, but liver also controls tendons in our body. So, so it's a good time to do kind of, kind of a Tai Chi yoga type of exercise in spring. Okay. And for food, uh, it says to eat more grains and seeds because these foods have abundant energy inside them waiting to sprout just like this little plant here. And um, on the back of your handout, I included a recipe for spring roll. Have you guys ever wondered why spring roll is called spring roll? <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that either. <laughs> um, because the, the original ingredient of spring roll included sprouts and eggs. Those symbolizes sort of energy waiting to be born. And so, so this would be a good time to eat those type of foods to enhance the energy to be born in the later season. Okay. So that's spring. All right, summer. The summer three months. It is when all things flourish. It's best, best to get, go to bed late and wake up early. Uh, stay physically active to sweat it out. And this is the time you want to sweat it out to prevent pores from clogging and the chi from stagnating. And then I'll explain a little bit why. You see how this energy is originally from here and then going up 
So the yang energy is going up, so does our yang energy in the body. They all want to go out in the pores. And so if we try to hold them down, then that creates some stagnation. And so that's why the yellow emperor is telling us this is the time to do exercise that will help uh, promote some sweating. And emotionally, avoid anger, because this is the time of heart. And heart relates to joy. Um, but we don't want to overjoy either. Chinese medicine is all about being you know, in the middle, equilibrium. Um, as the yang energy goes up, it is also a tendency that we get overly joyed from summer vacation and all the parties. But it is also uh, needed to refrain from overjoy. So stay happy and easygoing, it says. And violating this natural order of summer will damage the heart and create disease for the autumn. Because the energy was not able to peak, then lowering, thus lowering the supply demand for autumn. So imagine this is a seed growing. And once it gets to the peak, it flowers, it flowers. But if it doesn't flower, we're not going to get fruit here in the autumn. So for food, what should we eat for summer? Because the summer young energy rises up and all goes out to our body, that leaves our internal organ vulnerable. So in the summertime, you may find yourself having poor digestion, lack of appetite, and then you know easy to have a diarrhea. That is because all the young energy, what is supposed to you know move the inside is all out now so leaving the in, inner part kind of cold and vulnerable so it's kind of counterintuitive but in chinese medicine they actually suggest eating ginger in the summer to warm up the internal um, digestion and also to eat soup because in the summer um, when we have low appetite it is nice to have some soup which is easy to digest and then so that also help warm our digestion and um, soup and broth you know things that are cooked down and so the nutrients are also already extracted and so it will be easy on our um, digestion okay so that is summer and autumn I'm back up this is the time when things reach maturity and a level of stability. It is best to go to bed early and wake early. When the weather turns harsh during the autumn time, so can our emotions. So it is best to remain calm and peaceful and collect your thoughts from running wild. So this collect your thoughts, you can also think of it as harvesting. You know, this is a time of harvest. And we've already you know, reached the peak, and now it's time to gather all the good sources. And um, it says, violating the natural order of autumn will damage the lungs and create disease for the winter, because the energy was not harvest, harvested, and thus making the winter storage difficult. So winter, which we'll talk about later, is a time for dormancy and storage, waiting for the next round of life cycle. Um, but if you don't harvest enough, you might not survive the winter. And so for food, autumn, and this is in the olden time, um, they actually suggested people to eat more sauces. And in the olden days, when they make sauces, um, whether it be a spicy sauce or sour sauce, these sauces are fermented. And that means it has a lot of enzyme to help our digestion. Especially in the, in the fall, this is a time where we get abundance of food and we might need some enzyme to help us digest. So they um, digest and absorb nutrients. So this is the time they um, would suggest eating sauces. Okay. All right, in winter. So winter is the time to conserve energy and store. 
in Chinese, uh, the Yellow Emperor says, winter three months is when all things dormant and conserve energy. It's best to go to bed early and wake up after the sunrise <laughs> because it's cold. And so we want the sun to you know, warm up the, the, the room first before you get up and avoid, um, and this will also avoid disturbing um, too much of a young energy in our body. And at this season, desires and mental activities should be kept quiet. Stay warm, avoid sweating, and keep your pores closed. And um, some people might not even take showers because they want to keep their pores closed. Violating the nature, natural order of the winter will damage the kidneys and create disease for the spring because the energy was not conserved and then making the spring seed unable to sprout. And um, so, so you see the yin, yang, and five element really going in a full circle is, is kind of like uh, Chinese medicine is all about cause and effect. So if you do something, prepare yourself here, then you get the result here. If you don't prepare yourself, you might see some disease coming up too. And so this is, you know, looking at the human body, but you can also look at it in the macro sense at how our world, um, how our season is going. So taking this past winter, for example, we had a really warm winter. And so if you think about, okay, if this is the storage part isn't well, how might the summer be? If the yin, yin energy isn't there, when the yang rises in the summer, there's not, not a hold back. There's nothing to hold back. And so that's why we had a extraordinarily hot summer this year. So in a way, you can use yin yang in your daily life and just kind of observe the things surrounding you. You can figure things out in a logical sense. Okay, All right. and for food, winter, they actually suggested some weak wine. I'm not quite sure what that might be in terms of today. <laughs> um, as all young energy conserve inside the body, people move less in the winter, pores are closed, it is easy to catch a cold on the surface. So in the old days, people drink a little bit of wine for this, its this, uh, dispersing property. Um, when this wine is, drunk, is drinking, the channel will kind of open. Your meridians will open up a little bit. And um, so it'll move any stagnant chi that has set there too long. And also um, it will move some dampness. So whenever we don't sit there too long and don't move, there is uh, dampness that will create. So drinking weak wine helps to b the body to keep warm and also dispel coldness. Okay. So that is it for the four season living. Um, and then the Chinese medicine is really about life science. And, and I hope today that you will walk away with kind of a new perspective in how the world runs from a Chinese sort of a yin yang pers uh, angle. Um, I don't expect everybody to go home and do this yet. <laughs> um, but she is definitely a, a practitioner, uh, um, she, you know, whether physically, mentally, She's, she must be following sort of the doctrine of Chinese medicine somehow without knowing to be able to do this. But I, I really, I yoga yeah, I believe she was 87 when she took this picture. Did she just show off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I do hope everyone will go home and and kind of remember the essence of Chinese medicine that the sky and the human, there's a harmony that needs to be reached. The, the universe outside and inside needs to be respected 
and, and really need to be aware of and um, to keep your keen observation open. I think that is very, very important and, and the key foundation to good health. So I hope everyone has here has good health and maybe I'll see you in the next lecture. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Under what element would you put the skin? A spleen, yes. Uh, earth. The skin? Oh, skin? Yeah. Skin actually relates to the, the, autumn? the autumn lung. Yeah. Because um, they think of lung as, you know, you're breathing in and out, the so does your pores. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the skin. Any, yes? How does this change if you're in, say, Australia, which is below oh. the equator? <laughs> but they do have four seasons too, right? Right, but that's yeah. the opposite of ours. <laughs> I believe similar, I mean, the yin yang applies there as well um, because, you know, they still have four seasons, they still have the directions. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions that you have? Is yes. Is there any Chinese medicine practiced in Iowa City? Uh, I am. <laughs> yes. Do you have a car? Oh yeah. Yes, I can. I have those. I can distribute it. Yep. Any other? Yes. Well, I could just say I've had a treatment and. It's oh. Definitely Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and and I tell people, you know, acupuncture. Even though we saw it was a tip of iceberg, um, but it does really channel into our body. And uh, even though in America, pe most people know it by pain relief, and they come in for knee pain and back pain, but they walk out feeling like, oh. So relax. What what's going on? And I tell them it's one stone, two birds, because not only we're you know going into the muscle layer and then relaxing it with the needles, but we're also tapping into the acupuncture meridians, and each point have their um, own function in helping the body to come back to equilibrium. And we'll talk more about the meridians and channels next. Can acupuncture work for anxiety? Oh yes, big time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, I've uh, had experience with acupuncture and kind yeah. of, and, and yeah. it's a it's a wonderful experience, and it's a whole new way of looking at your body and your health. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then yes, go ahead. Um, my experience, my first experience with it was uh, when I was having sinus infection. Uh -huh. I was getting a chiropractic adjustment. My mm. chiropractor also had draining in acupuncture, uh -huh. and he used acupressure right here. Oh. And okay. it worked like a charm on getting rid of the pain in the sinuses. Yeah, yeah. You know, I offered um, a free acupuncture here a while ago. There's there was a um, health fair here at the senior center and one gentleman had um, neck pain and he never tried acupuncture and I put one needle on his forearm for his neck pain <laughs> and he started rotating and he was passing his sort of stuck endpoint and he was so it all has to do with you know the body channel and meridian so yeah I had one teacher he would say well where's the light okay it's up here and where's the light switch over there and so same thing in our body we have light switches in other places <laughs> yeah my mother went to a, a man who was Chinese uh -huh. he was a Western MD but he also knew Chinese medicine hmm. and he said whenever I travel with my family I don't bring my medical bag I just bring my acupuncture needles <laughs> that's all I need yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> well, yes. I had acupuncture done in my knee. I'm sitting here with my legs crossed. I haven't been able to cross my legs two or three years, and I, I can yeah. sit here again. It's not completely gone, but I would say 80%. It, it, mm. I sleep at night. I mean, it, it's different. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, I, I'll give you my business card. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Oh, just another antidote. Oh, time. yes. Uh, a number of years ago uh -huh. in Portland, I had a medical doctor who was also an acupuncturist, and he discovered something about my liver that might have gone totally. Um, wow. And uh, it was through the combination of that that yeah. he was able to. Yeah, and and right now in, in the modern days, uh, all acupuncturists they also receive Western medicine training. So right now, it's not only about which one is better; it's a combination of the the two. Yes, yes, yes. So we're bringing the best of, of both sides. Yeah. Let me just say one more thing. Yeah. In the last issue of the AARP, mm -hmm. they talked about it that acupuncture should be used in certain treatments. It should be included. Mm. And they really spoke well of acupuncture. Oh, okay. I have and to look up that. AARP. Okay. I don't know how many years. Okay. I'll, I'll take a look at that. <laughs> now let's get Medicare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's still probably kind of a new thing here, it's still in baby step. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, like, I think the first uh, acupuncturist in, in practicing in California, she, and she was arrested even, I think that was back in the, oh gosh, 60s, 70s? Yeah. So they have come a, a long way. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you.